we want to solve the polynomial inequality and express the solution using inequalities and using interval notation. Looking at the given inequality, let's first set the right side equal to zero by adding 16 to both sides of the equation. So if we add 16 to both sides, we would have the equivalent inequality x to the fourth minus 17x squared plus 16 greater than zero. And now the first step in solving the polynomial inequality will be to find the zeros of the polynomial on the left side or solve the corresponding equation, which should be x to the fourth minus 17x squared plus 16 equals zero. Let's see if we can solve this equation by factoring. Because we have a trinomial on the left side, let's see if it factors into two binomial factors. The factors of x to the fourth are x to the second and x to the second. Because the leading coefficient is one, we now need to find the factors of positive 16 that add to negative 17, which would be negative 16 and negative one. So one factor is x squared minus 16, another factor is x squared minus one. Notice both of these binomials are differences of squares, and therefore each of these binomials will factor into two binomials. So we'll have the product of four binomials. One factor of x squared minus 16 is x plus four. The other is x minus four. One factor of x squared minus one is x plus one. The other factor is x minus one. This product equals zero. When the factors are equal to zero, x plus four is equal to zero when x equals negative four. x minus four is equal to zero when x equals positive four x plus one is equal to zero when x equals negative one. x minus one is equal to zero when x equals positive one. So these are the four zeros of the polynomial, or the solutions to the corresponding equation. Now we need to plot these points on the number line as open points or closed points based upon the original inequality symbol. Because we're looking for the x values that make the polynomial less than zero, and we know these values make the polynomial equal to zero, because these values are not going to be part of the solution, we plot the points as open points. So because the inequality is greater than, we plot the points as open. If it was greater than or equal to, these values would be part of the solution, and we plot closed points. But again, because we have greater than, we plot all four values as open points. So we have an open point on negative four, negative one, positive one, and positive four. The next step is to select test values in each interval. Notice how we divided the number line into five intervals using these four points. So working from left to right, let's select the test value of negative five. It doesn't matter which value we select in the interval as long as it's in the interval. So let's select negative two in the next interval, zero in this interval, two in this interval, and finally five in this interval. Now we substitute these test values into the original inequality and see if they satisfy the inequality. If the inequality is true, all the values in the interval are true, and the interval is part of the solution. If the inequality is false, all the values in the interval are false, and the interval is not part of the solution. So now we need to evaluate this inequality here at x equals negative five, x equals negative two, x equals zero, x equals two, and x equals five. It's quite a bit of work to perform this substitution, so we're going to use the calculator to save some time. To do this, we'll enter the polynomial on the left side into y1. So we press y equals, clear out any old functions, and now we'll enter x to the fourth, minus 17x squared, plus 16, and now we'll go back to the home screen by pressing second mode for quit. So to evaluate the left side, or to evaluate this polynomial when x equals negative five, we'll now enter y one of five on the calculator. So we'll press vars, right arrow, enter, enter, in parentheses, negative five, and enter. And notice how we get 216, which means when we substitute negative five for x, the left side is equal to 216. 
which means the inequality would be 216 greater than zero, which is true, which means all the values in this interval on the left would also be true, and therefore this interval is part of the solution. And now we substitute negative two into the inequality. To divide with the left side, we'll go back to the calculator and enter y1 of negative two. So vars, right arrow, enter, enter, in parentheses, negative two, enter, which gives us negative 36. So the inequality would be negative 36 greater than zero, which is false. So because this test value is false, all the values in this interval are false, and this interval is not part of the solution. The next test value is zero. We'll notice when x is zero, the left side would just be 16. 16 greater than zero is true, which means all the values in this interval are true, and therefore this interval is part of the solution. Next we have x equals two. So we'll enter y1 of two, which equals negative 36. Negative 36 greater than zero is false. So all the values in this interval are false. This interval is not part of the solution. And finally we have x equals five. So going back to the calculator one last time, we'll enter y1 of five. Again, using the calculator saves us quite a bit of time, but of course we could perform the substitution by hand. So the left side is equal to 216 when x equals five. 216 greater than zero is true, which means all the values in this last interval on the right would be true, and therefore this interval is part of the solution. So now we'll go ahead and graph our solution, which will be the intervals marked true. So our solution are all the x values left of negative four, not including negative four, all the values between negative one and one, not including the endpoints, and all the values to the right of four, not including four. So this is the graph of our solution. The intervals marked false are not part of our solution. Now let's go ahead and express our solution using inequalities. So on the left we have x less than negative four, or x is greater than negative one and less than positive one, or x is greater than four. And now we'll express the same interval using interval notation. Toward the left we approach negative infinity, toward the right we approach positive infinity. So this first interval on the left would be the open interval from negative infinity to negative four. We use a rounded parenthesis when the endpoint is not included. So this rounded parenthesis here indicates we have an open point. The square bracket corresponds to a closed point. And then we have union, the open interval from negative one to one, with parentheses, again, because the endpoints are not included, union, here we, we have the open interval from four to infinity. So here we have the graph of the solution, as well as the solution using inequalities and interval notation. Before we go though, let's also verify our work by analyzing the graph of y equals x to the fourth minus 17x squared plus 16. Here's the graph of y equals x to the fourth minus 17x squared plus 16. And looking at the inequality in this form here, we're looking for the x values where the polynomial is greater than zero, which means on the graph, this would be when the graph is above the x-axis. So notice how the graph is above the x-axis here, here, and here. So we find our solution along the x-axis where we find the x values, and because the inequality symbol is greater than zero, not equal to zero, we do not include the x values where it crosses the x-axis. So on the left we have all the values from negative four to the left, not including negative four, or x less than negative four, all the values between negative one and positive one, not including the endpoints. So here's where x is greater than negative one and less than one, and then following on the right, all the values to the right of four, not including four, which would be x greater than four. So these intervals on the x-axis correspond to our solution, 
which verifies our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.